Narayanam Namaskitam Naram Chavana Notamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Udhyarya Nashta Prayashu Bhadresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevya Bhagavati Uttama Shukhi Bhakti Vabhati Naishtiki Nigama Kapurur Garitam Param Shukamakaram Itajya Visamitam Pivata Bhagavatam Rashamariam Mohoro Horo Sikubu Vivavakaham Krishna Swada Vapagate Dhamma Girihasha Karana Stadi Shamasha Paranako Duna Uditaham Tamapia Dabasu to Bishop Humbibo, some appear in a bit of Bidusanum, Prakyahi to Hoi Mahara Tatanum, some place in Iranum, Santi Nanyataham. The Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pasaya Bhutare, Shimadi Bhakti Padanta Shami Dinamani. Namaste Sarasati Devi Guruani Pachari, near Vishes on Yuri Paskata de Sahari. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitananda, Sri Adve, the Gadadhar Shiva Sadi Gor Bhakta Vindu. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Welcome. Motivational Monday, Rakesh, Ram Kishore, Chris, upstairs. Thanks for joining us. Sorry I missed you last Wednesday, which was a significant occasion of Lord Nityananda's appearance day up in Salt Lake City. They had a wonderful celebration. About 40 people came on a Wednesday in the middle of the week. Great Abhishek. Interesting thing is the Pujari up there, Gobindabhaka invited everyone to bring their Gordani Dai, the Thai deities from home. So in addition to the Gordani Thai deities that are on the altar there, there were about four or five additional sets that people had brought from home and they were all bathed. People were able to worship their own Gordani Thai deities right in the temple on the occasion of Nityananda Trayodisi. So a nice talk about Lord Nityananda by Ras Vilas had a beautiful, beautiful feast, including porries. <laughs> so that was last Wednesday, Nityananda Trayodisi. Good morning, Ram Kishore, Brali, uh, Jean. Who else do we have here? By Bobby, Justin, thanks for joining us. And uh, let me update you about my eye surgery. Uh, I'll tell you a little story to show how effective it was. Surgery itself is basically painless. Um, they give you an IV, which gives you a, makes you mildly, you know, giggly, and they numb your eye with eye drops. And the surgery only lasts about fifteen minutes, but it's um, they they kind of cover your eye, and the doctor gets in there, and there's a really bright light. This is cataract surgery, not let's see. It's a really bright light. I mean, it's really high wattage. And it's shining right in your eye and you, you're supposed to keep your eye open. You can't close your eye against the light. So there's no way to get away from this light. And it's so bright, it's, it actually induced in me somewhat of a gag reflex. So about 10 minutes into the surgery, I'm like thinking, I hope this is, I hope this is gonna be, I hope this is gonna be over pretty soon. <laughs> and, uh, and it was, it, it didn't take more than 15 minutes total. And the interesting thing is, the next day, my face was really red. And a couple of days later, I started peeling. So I'm thinking, what is that light? In like 15 minutes, there was a light shining in my eye. And I guess it was uh, bathing the rest of my face also. It must have been some sort of high power tanning light or ultraviolet light or something, because I started peeling uh, afterwards. Now, here's my story about how effective it was. I had a follow up visit the next day. They sat me down in a chair, so the doctor will be here in just a minute. So it was an eye chart right across from there. And you know, the first, it's like a pyramid. The first letter is really big. Then the second line are two letters, third line are five or six letters are smaller. And then you get down to the sixth or seventh line. They're really small. The day before the whole chart had been blurry. I could barely tell you what the first letter at the top and the second two. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, forget about it. That was with this left eye. So I'm sitting there waiting for the doctor. I don't even have my glasses on. And I caught myself reading the, the, the lower line. I caught myself reading the small letters on the sixth line with this eye that had been operated on the day before. I thought, this is, this is like amazing. This is a miracle. So as you know, you know studying, reading, Eyes are very important to me. And so I'm very happy at the 
new lease on life that my left eye got. I look forward to many more years of reading Prabhupada's books and sharing some of that knowledge with you as well. Good morning, Lakshmi. Are you, is your audio on? Rob's also with us. He said he has a farming conference today, so he may not be able to be personally present throughout all of this, but uh, he checked in with me anyway. Are you there, Lakshmi? I am, thank you. Anything to report from your weekend and your... Oh, yeah, we had a uh, last nice, nice road trip. We went to a beautiful beach and did kirtan there and it was it was absolutely wonderful. <laughs> cool. Don't send me pictures. Of you I won't. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know. I know. So would you believe it? I've still had, I still could, we still could have said a lot of things about that previous verse. We could have gone back to it for an eighth time, but I just thought, okay, let's, let's move on. It's about time to move on. You could spend like 30 years on each verse. So I thought we moved a couple of verses forward and it's kind of about the Kali Yuga and the symptoms of Kali Yuga. But then I thought, we don't want to talk about Kali Yuga on a Monday morning. You know, <laughs> what's always baffled me in my 50 years as a devotee are these plays, these dramas that devotees put on, you know what I'm talking about, Nakshmi? They put on yeah. a drama of Kali Yuga. Yeah, the age of Kali, the, the Govinda. Kali. I never liked those dramas. I never, you sit through the drama and you see lust personified and anger personified and greed. And you think, why do I have to see this? You know, I see this every day. This is <laughs> everywhere, you know, billboards, newspapers, people that you interact with in the grocery store. I, I mean, this is why, why you want to put it in a play. You know, it's, it's kind of like rubbing our faces in it. I, I was I was there in New York when uh, they put that play on. I was Prabhupada. there too. You are? I was there oh. too. We we were passing through uh, to India, and we stopped in New York for a day before transferring planes. And I saw that in the old theater in New York with uh, Lokamangala, Prajapati, Sadapati, and all. And yes. I thought, man, you know, <laughs> heavy rasagya. <laughs> it's just too yeah. heavy. Maybe, maybe tomorrow we'll get into the symptoms of Kali Yuga, but um, I wanted to concentrate today on, on um, the ability of pure devotees to see the future. Like Vyasadeva was sitting there 5,000 years ago and he, he pictures the Kali Yuga. He knows all of the negative things that are gonna happen 5,000 years in the future. And he, he feels so much uh, empathy for us who have taken our births in Kali Yuga. And he wants to do something to lighten the load. He wants to do something to buffer us from all the really horrible things that uh, are extant in Kali Yuga. But the amazing thing is that devotees are able to see the future. And so that's the aspect that I thought we might discuss today. You wanna read this verse? What, what verse? 17th and 18th. What verse? 17th and 18th. So be one four. Yeah, one four, 17 and 18. Anybody who's who's uh, listening in, have a Bhagavad Tom. This is fourth cat, uh, fourth chapter, first count 17. And also if you're typing in the comments, we, we like to have lots of comments every day. You know, I'm, I'm if you guys put in 50 or 60 comments and then I respond to you, we actually get over a hundred comments for a single session, which I think is really good. So any so we're gonna so we started off talking about I. Anybody has any I experiences to share? And because we're speaking of eyes, we're also gonna talk about transcendental vision, the the ability to see with your inner eye or your spiritual vision or your third eye or whatever you want to call it, see the future and how pure devotees get that ability. So anything you have to say or ask or comment on from a personal experience. A realization, something you've read, anything to do with vision or seeing the future, or predicting the future, or eyes, just throw it all in there in the comment section. Let's get things really turned up here today. Okay, so Lakshmi is going to read these two verses here. Okay, Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 4, verses 17 and 18. 
bhautakanam cha bhavanam shakti rasam cha tat kritam ashadhanam nishatvan durmedhan rashtya yusaha durbagangsh cha janan diksha munir dibyena chakshusha sarva vanashrama namyad dadyao hitam amoga drik and you want me to read the english yeah please and the first paragraph okay. is report as well okay the great sage who was fully equipped in knowledge could see through his transcendental vision the deterioration of everything material due to the influence of the age he could also see that the faithless people in general would be reduced in duration of life and would be impatient due to lack of goodness thus he contemplated for the welfare of men in all statuses and orders of life and the first paragraph of shula propat's commentary reads the unmanifested forces of time are so powerful that they reduce all matter to oblivion in due course in kali yuga the last millennium of a round of four millenniums the power of all material objects deteriorates by the influence of time in this age the duration of the material body of the people in general is much reduced and so is the memory the action of matter has also not so much incentive the land does not produce food grains in the same proportions as it did in other ages the cow does not give as much milk as it used to give formerly the production of vegetables and fruits is less than before as such all living beings both men and animals do not have sumptuous nourishing food due to want of so many necessities of life naturally the duration of life is reduced the memory is short intelligence is meager mutual dealings are full of hypocrisy and so on and so on let's skip the so on or leave it till tomorrow <laughs> Just briefly, <laughs> moving on to the next uh, short paragraph here in the purport, it says the great sage Vyasadeva could see this by his transcendental vision as an astrologer can see the future fate of man or an astronomer can see the solar and lunar eclipses. These liberated souls who can see through the scriptures can foretell the future of all mankind. They can see this due to their sharp vision of spiritual attainment. Prabhupada says that the individual soul, we're individual souls, and God is a soul. But we're only conscious, and God, God is cognizant and we're cognizant. However, we're limitedly cognizant, he's unlimitedly cognizant. We're situated in this body, we're aware of the pains and pleasures of this body. Chetragnam chapi sarva chetashu bharata chetra chaitanya yashtagyanam. We're aware of the pains and pleasures of this body, but I'm not aware of the pains and pleasures of your body, Lakshmi, sitting over there in uh, Puerto Rico, all the uh, warmth and the comfort that the sunlight <laughs> and the beaches give you. I'm not aware of that. Um, <laughs> you're not aware of us slogging through the snow here in Utah. Or, um, or, or the beauty of your deities and temple and everything that you've created there. There you go. So we're all cognizant, we're eternal, but our cognizance is, is limited. We have hair, we don't know how the hair grows. Eat food and the food digests, but we don't, we don't know how the food digests. We don't know how it gives us energy, what to speak of. We're not driving it, we're not um, engineering it, we're not causing it to happen. So that besides ourselves as individual limited cognizant beings, there's another living being who is unlimited, who is situated in the hearts of all living beings accompanying the individual soul, and he knows everything, past, present, and future, probably. He knows, he knows our thinking, he knows our willing, he knows what we're going to do before we're even gonna do it because he's present within everyone's heart 
and he's cognizant not only of the pains and pleasures in my body, but Lakshmi's body, Rob's body, by Bobby's body, Anjali's body, good morning, Gary's body, good morning, uh, <laughs> uh, Justin's body, good morning. Justin says, what did he say? It's your comment has gone out of, but he says he wears hearing aid, he's got some false teeth, and one other thing, something about his eyes, so he doesn't trust his material senses. There you go, Justin. <laughs> Good take on things. Don't trust your material senses. But we obviously, Yasudeva is sitting there 5,000 years ago, and he's seeing the future. Now, that's normally not something an individual living entity can do. Yasudeva, however, is not totally ordinary. He's Maha Muni Kimba Parid Yaha. He's the literary incarnation of the Lord. <clears throat> um, but it's indicated that he's connected, he's plugged in to the super soul. The super soul is not far away. He's right beside you. It's like two birds in a tree. They're sitting in a tree on the same branch. The problem is that for the most part, we're turned away from the other bird, which is the Supreme Lord, the super soul, who's all knowing, who's all loving, who's all powerful. He's right there, right? It's so close you can touch him, but we've turned our backs. We had a parrot for 25 years. He was an African gray named Jai. He was never in good health. Even when we got him, he was kind of like the runt of the litter. But he had just such a, such a wonderful attitude. He's very happy. I remember one time after the Sunday feast, we were having kirtan downstairs in the buffet area. Jai was on the table there. So he started dancing to the kirtan just ecstatically, just literally jumping up and down, flapping his rings. He got so carried away, at one point he almost fell off the table. Um, and that, that video went viral on uh, YouTube. But uh, shortly before he passed away, about 24 hours before he passed away, I had him down here where I live in the basement. I was uh, chanting sokas and working out on my treadmill and Jai was up sort of on a rack above and he turned his back, which was unusual. And I remember thinking at the time, why has he got his back turned to me? Because usually he's looking at me and he's empathizing and he's tweeting and saying everything, but he wasn't saying anything and he had his back turned to me. And I thought, is there something wrong with him? Is he off his game? He doesn't seem to be his usual interactive effervescent self. And then surely, sure enough, like 24 hours later, we found him dead in his cage. So he hadn't been feeling well, he hadn't been in good health and he was turned away from me. So that's our situation as well. God has accompanied us. We left him. We were envious, some or other, of his position, his prominence in the spiritual world. We wanted to go somewhere where we could be somewhat sovereign, where our name could be on people's lips, where we could have our wives and children, and our land and our businesses and do our thing. And the Lord came with us. He didn't actually cut us off or let us go. He not only provided an alternative world in the Matatma, but he accompanied us in the region of the soul. And he's been with us since who knows how long we've been here. During that entire sojourn, we haven't cared to take advantage of his being present with us as the Supreme Lord, the overseer, the proprietor, and the permitter. We've been so absorbed in enjoying the fruits, some sweet, some bitter, of the tree of this material body in this material world, that we have failed to take note of the supreme, all-powerful, munificent, loving Father just right next door within touching distance. So this, these Motivational Monday, Transcendental Tuesday, and Wisdom Wednesday are meant to correct that omission on our part and help catalyze our diverting our attention back to the supreme lord so that we can truly turn our lives around enrich our lives get out of this dead-end world of birth death disease and old age and go back home back to god so here's Vyasadeva, and he's plugged in he's turned uh by Vyasadeva's incarnation of the lord he never was away from the lord in the first place but he plugged into some power 
that as far as knowledge is concerned, as far as accessibility is concerned, like take the internet and multiply it like 5 billion times. And that's the super soul within your heart. Internet is nothing compared to the super soul. Anything? Yeah, I mean, um, well, you're referring to the, that, um, that analogy that Shiva Prabhupada uses all the time, the, the parrots sitting in the tree. One is trying to enjoy the fruits. The other one is waiting, witnessing, and waiting for the other parrot to uh, turn towards it. That's a very nice uh, analogy. You, you explained it nicely. And the other thing is that uh, this is mentioned here that Krishna indicates here, he says, um, the Sanskrit that he uses is Dibyena Chakshusha. And we notice that in the 11th chapter of Bhagavad Gita also, when Arjuna requests to see the universal form and Krishna tells him, well, you're not, you're not qualified to see. I have to give you uh, Dibyena Chakshusha also in order for you to see that. Super soul sitting right next to us, waiting uh, for any moment that we turn and seek the, the help. We, we just simply don't have either the interest nor the vision, this Divyena Chakshusa. So the, the Chakshus is Guna Chakshush. That's what we use. We use our vision as filtered through the Gunas. We see yellow, we see red, we see blue depending on you know, the predominant influence of the gunas. That's, that's the influence. So Prabhupada has come with this, uh, all these transcendental books that he has given us. He's at least given us jnana chakshush right off. We may not be worthy yet until we prove our, ourselves worthy of the mercy of Guru and Krishna to get the divyena chakshush, but we, we have jnana chakshush in it. Prabhupada is we may, not have, so much. we may not have spontaneous vision that's gifted to us. Like Arjuna was gifted with the vision to see the universal form. Sudur Darshami Dam Rupam Dristavam Dristavam, the Drista, the vision. Krishna gave him, he blessed him so he could see the universal form. So we may not be, as you pointed out, mature to that level, but we can read the scripture. The scripture is infallible. The scripture contains volumes and volumes of words coming directly from the supreme personality of godhead's mouth who knows past present and future so even if we fail to have that divine vision which is imparted to us by the super soul we're not at that level we can still read the scriptures and get infallible knowledge about what's coming and uh and so that's a advantage that we can take um that's a facility we can take advantage of I'd like to thank Anjali for just peppering the comment section here in Facebook. She talks about Charu lives in the basement. Yes, I live in a little closet in the basement. My wife lives next door. We have kind of, you've heard of the penthouse, right? The, the deluxe suite on the top floor of the high rise building. Well, we're, we, we're, our in, we're in the basement. I don't know if you still call that a penthouse or not, but we have our little insular um, space here in the basement where I have little treadmill and workout bench and I uh, have our internet connection just enough to live by nothing special nothing elaborate and then also Anjali she says yes internet is nothing compared to the super soul she also comments on Jai that he was looking forward to the next level 25 years living in the temple eating prasadam associating with devotees you can't really be sad about a bird leaving its body because a bird's body is not that good of a body. It's not that good of a life being in a cage most of your time. So he was released to the next level. So Jai lived up to his words, his, his, his namesake. <laughs> he achieved victory, he transitioned from here to the next level. In the 13th chapter, 14th verse of the Bhagavad Gita, some of the Lord's uh, omnisciency is explained, the, the, the high, hows, whys, and wherefores. Sarvata paniparam tat, sarvata sitsiramukam, sarvata shutimoloke, sarvamavita tishtati. Everywhere are his hands and legs, 
his eyes, heads, and this is Krishna speaking about himself. So I guess he knows himself. Um, everywhere, his eyes, heads, and faces, he has ears everywhere. In this way, the super soul exists pervading everything. None of us could say that about ourselves. The individual soul cannot make such a claim that my eyes, legs, and heads are everywhere. I can reach out with my arm and grab or touch something that's two or three feet away, but I can't reach to Afghanistan. I can't reach to France. I can't reach down to Puerto Rico to touch some of that warm sun-drenched sand, or that beautiful ocean water, which is probably 70 degrees in temperature. Um, but the super soul can, his hands and arms are everywhere. And that's why before we eat vegetarian food, we put certain portions of what we've cooked and hopefully grown and harvested as well on a plate, put it on the altar, or we put it in front of a picture. We bow down, we say, Namo Vishnu Padaya, Namo Mahabharanaya, Namo Brahmanya Dabai. And we offer that food to Krishna. Now, Krishna is Kaloka Namani, Vijamani, he's millions and millions of light years away in his own abode in the spiritual world, but he's also present within every atom, present within the heart of every living being. So he's very far away, and yet paradoxically, he's near as well. He has no arms and feet with limitations such as our arms and feet, but at the same time, his arms and feet are everywhere. He doesn't have eyes like we have. We can't see on the other side of a wall. We can't see something in the distance, although after my cataract surgery, I'm a lot better. I'll, I'll tell you that. Yeah. But I still have basic limitations, which are inherent to material senses. I can read that eye chart. I can read that smallest line in the eye chart, but I can't, no matter how many cataract surgeries I have, I can't read through the wall. I can't read. I can't see what's on the other side of the Wasatch Mountains here. I don't know what's going on. 500 miles away in Denver. If I close my eyes, I can't see beyond the eyelids. So none of us can make the claim that our eyes, arms, nose, ears uh, are everywhere. That is not possible. But he whose hands, arms, eyes, and nose, and ears are everywhere is right next to you in the region of the heart. And so if you turn to him, you can access all that knowledge. And it's not that there'll be a download and you'll know everything that there is to know and you'll become like God. You will know past, present, and future. That's not what we're talking about. You don't want that. That would just, your mind would just explode. It would just, I mean, you, why would you want all knowledge? You couldn't handle even a small fraction of it. But what you need at any given moment to serve the Lord, that will be given to you. Just tell you a brief little story. It's kind of funny. Uh, it's just a story. I don't make any claims about it, but anyway. <laughs> Anjali says, she says, true, you had cataract surgery and you still can't read past the wall. Yes, Anjali, I still can't read past the wall because I'm not God, <laughs> okay? <laughs> can, can you see your eyelids? <laughs> can you see your eyelids? So here's the story. There was a devotee, simple devotee, didn't graduate high school, not, not a big intellect. He was getting initiated. This is like the very beginning of Krishna consciousness. And uh, Prabhupada was giving the beads out, telling him he promised to follow the regular principles, chant 16 rounds a day. Your name is Gopi Prana Balava. And this devotee, a simple, uneducated devotee, he's like five or six devotees back. Holy cow, Gopi Prana Wadava. <laughs> I hope I don't get a name like that. I'll never be able to pronounce it. I'll never be able to remember it. And then the, the second devotee came up. Prabhupada says, here's your beads. Your name is Anakadun Dubi. <laughs> this devotee's like, oh my gosh, what have I gotten in? So he's starting to look for the exits. So anyway, it went on like that, probably giving these five and six syllable names. And then he came up in this devotee, what are the four regular principles? No other sex, no gambling, no intoxication, no meat eating, 
how many rounds of chant a day, 16 rounds a day. And then the moment that he dreaded came, Prabhupada said, here are your beads and your initiated name is Gopal Das. And uh, Prabhupada said, is that all right? <laughs> <laughs> there was another instance too, when um, Prabhupada told uh, Ramananda to go to capital what was it? Macmillan, I think. Yeah, he told Prabhupada to take the manuscript of the Bhagavad Gita to Macmillan. That right. Prabhupada made a record, and in those days, uh, Macmillan had a record branch, and they'd bought, they'd sent a purchase order for one copy of Prabhupada's record, Sounds of Transcendence, or I forget what it was called, something about transcendence. And so Ramananda was going to deliver the record to, to Macmillan. And Prabhupada said, take my manuscript of the Bhagavad Gita along with you. And Brahmananda said, well, Prabhupada, I'm, I'm going to the record department. I'm not even going to the publishing department. Prabhupada said, take the manuscript of the Bhagavad Gita with you. And he said, Prabhupada, I'm just going down to the mail room. I'm going down to the basement. I'm not going to be anywhere where there's any executives. Prabhupada said, take the manuscript of the Bhagavad Gita with you. Said Prabhupada, we've contacted their printing company any number of times. We've gone over, we've visited, they're, they've, they've rejected us, they're not interested. Prabhupada said, take the manuscript of the Bhagavad Gita with you. So Brahmanan said, okay. So he's got this big manuscript under his arm and he's going to deliver the record. He's in the mail room. He's in the basement, not of the publishing arm, but of the branch, the building, the small building where they do limited sound recordings and records and so on and so forth. And lo and behold, somebody with an English accent and a thousand dollar suit comes rushing into the mail room to pick up a piece of mail that he didn't want to wait until they delivered it to the next building and his office. He picked it up, he doubled, he did a double take. He saw Brahmananda with Tilak on, he saw the bundle underneath Brahmanan's arm. And he said, that wouldn't by any chance be a manuscript of the Bhagavad Gita, would it? Brahmanan was like 300 pounds, you know, he's like a linebacker in the N NFL. And you could have blown him over with a feather. He said, yes. He said, what a coincidence. I just came from an executive meeting of the publishers who decided that we want to publish all the classics of the East. And we didn't have a copy of the Bhagavad Gita to use. Would you mind coming up to my office, young boy, young man? <laughs> so we don't need to have all knowledge downloaded. If, if that happened, we just explode. Just like we don't need to remember all of our past lives. It's all superfluous. It serves no productive purpose. But what we need for the time, place, and circumstances in order to serve the Lord, that will be supplied. Anjali says, what a coincidence. And she says, all these are caps in her comments. Take the manuscript of the Bhagavad Gita with you. <laughs> all right so so many instances of Prabhupada's ability to see beyond you know and, and, it, and it's it's amazing because um when you read Patanjali's yoga sutras he talks about the mystic cities in the third pada of the yoga sutras anima city lagima city mahima city prapti city uh prakamya city kamavayashita city ishita city all the eight different mystic cities that one can develop by entering deep uh into your meditation on your alambana your object of meditation but then patanjali says but a real yogi he has no interest in in these no interest at all and and that's you know basically what it is for a devotee one who is following the principles of bhakti yoga 
we, we don't do it for any ulterior motive, you know, hoitiki, a pratihata, yayatma suprasiditi, unmotivated and uninterrupted devotional service. And then, tesham satatam yuktanam bhajata priti purvakam dadami buddhi yogam tam yena mambu piyantite. And Krishna, by us rendering pure unalloyed devotional service, Krishna gives us the understanding by which we can come to him. So the, the system of bhakti yoga is, is a system of grace. You know, it's not a system that we do things mechanic, mechanically, and then as a result of the mechanical effort, we, we develop a talent or an ability. So, you know, even Patanjali, he said, yeah, you, you've got all these mystic cities at your fingertips, but that's not really the, the, the point of yoga. For, uh, I think it was six years here in Spanish Fork, we had a Pujari who, who did palm reading. And uh, people from all over Utah County came to see him. He, he got a bit of a name for himself. And uh, every day, five or six people would come. He charged $10. And he spent about a half an hour reading their palm. And then he had a Facebook page. And you could look at the comments. He say it was amazing. He knew things that nobody could have known. And yada, 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 yada. I never had my palm read. Just didn't interest me because I'd rather be surprised. You know? <laughs> I mean, you know, you, you, the, the problem with getting your palm read is that then you think you know, but you you don't know. You you don't know, especially if you're a Christian devotee, because you're you're not under Mars, you're not under Jupiter, you're not under Rahu, you're not under K2, you're not under. Um, uh, any of this sun or the moon, you're under Krishna. And Krishna can change things at will. He controls millions and millions of universes. The demigods are just uh, bowing down at the lotus feet of the Lord. And so you may think based on a palm reading or astrological reading that you know what your future is, but uh, I'd rather stay open. You know, I'd, I'd rather not close doors in my mind. I'd rather be open to any and all possibility. No sooner do you get a palm reading that this will be like this and this will be like this and this will happen, this will happen. Krishna is a 16 year old boy. He's a prankster. He likes to change things up. He, he doesn't let you get comfortable. He doesn't want your life to be predictable. Just because the palm reader told you this and this is gonna happen, Krishna is gonna throw you a curve ball. Krishna is going to surprise you. And so I really don't see the benefit in having your future told uh, because Krishna can counteract, Krishna can trump your future. And it's always in a delightful, surprising way. When you put God first place in your life, you need to fasten your seatbelt, put on your hard hat and get ready for a roller coaster ride. You know, life is going to be an adventure and the whole idea of knowing knowing your future seems to me to be taking some of the fun or potentially taking some of the fun out of what essentially is a roller coaster ride where there's going to be twists and turns that you could never ever see coming it's it's the unexpected things in life and it's even the negative things it's the difficult things it's the challenge which provide us with the greatest opportunity to keep a good attitude, to believe that the Lord is still on the throne, to be good to people, to continue to chant the holy names of the Lord, no matter what's coming against me or what's happening or not happening in my life. That's where the excitement, that's where the thrill comes. I will not let circumstances or people or opposition push my buttons. I will not let them push me down, cause me to de depressed and despondent. I will look forward to the unexpected difficulties and challenges of life as the very optimal best opportunity to stay in faith, pass the test and get the special favor of the Lord. And I just don't really see where astrology uh, uh, helps in that uh, endeavor. Yeah, well, when you think of it, I mean, Prabhupada has often said how, um, you know, a person an ordinary person is under the laws of material nature and under the throes of karma. Whereas someone who's surrendered their life to Krishna is under Krishna's direction. 
So whatever Krishna decides, so, you know, getting those types of things done, palm reading, astrology, etc. you know, they may be entertainment, they may be fun to listen to, because Prabhupada had his done a few times, and he saw it in that way as entertainment, but he also knew that, you know, Krishna is the supreme controller, he's the supreme director of the, the wanderings of all living entities. And particularly when you surrender your life, you know, you, Krishna is, he's funny. He's uh, what, Dira Lalita, he's, he's got a good sense of humor. So he throws things our way for, for our benefit. He does things for us, not to us. So everything that comes our way. And it doesn't and happen to you, it happens for you. Yeah. And, 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 you know, the astrology is oftentimes uh, tends to confuse or, as you said, uh, overly depress or overly elate because you say this is going to happen. Oh, wow, that's wonderful. I just have to wait until October and then all my needs are going to be fulfilled. And then October comes and it doesn't happen. And then you're like, well, depressed again. So I've seen people go from one reading to another and have that kind of roller coaster ride of emotion because you know they're they're taking it too seriously rather than you know the, the the attitude that you have whatever happens happens you know it's it's krishna krishna's in control he's he's at the steering wheel here <laughs> i'm just a passenger in the bus <laughs> anjali says whatever it is that you expect krishna will always counteract it in humorous ways and the problem is we might not get the joke for quite a while. Right. It's just what you said. <laughs> Krishna is playing a, a joke on us. You know, you rely on this guy. You rely on these predictions. You rely on these calculations. And Krishna is going to change it up on you. He's going to play a prank on you. The problem is you may not get the joke until years and years later. See what right. I'm saying? I'd right, rather right. just be open from the very, very beginning. And you said something about Prabhupada's chart and that made me think of this very same point that you're making. As far as I've heard, there were two predictions made and they weren't uh, sponsored by Prabhupada. It was when he was a child and apparently his father had his reading done. And the, the one reading was when, when he was born, the one astrologer said he will be one of the wealthiest men in the world. And, 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 and it seems that um, Prabhupada took this to mean that he would make a lot of money in the business world, and then that would finance his mission overseas. Of course, he didn't know it at, at, at the first, but he thought that Krishna had anointed him to be very successful in the business world. And then when he met Bhakti Siddhanta, he thought, well, that makes sense. I'm going to be rich. Uh, Bhakti Siddhanta sent me to the West. I have a very successful pharmaceutical business, so I'll just do that. I can't leave right now anyway because of my family, and I'll mass a nice, tidy sum of money, which can finance my trip to the West and set me set me up there. So that's basically, I mean, on a on one level, we can see Powerpod acting according to that prediction that he'd be a very wealthy man, maintain his family, maintain his business for many, many, many years, but. He went bankrupt. He lost everything. When he eventually went to America, he had like $7. So it didn't happen. Even if you get the prediction, you, you know, you don't, you know, it's like I said, Krishna's playing a joke on you and you may not get it right away. See what I'm saying? <laughs> it, it, it wasn't untrue. He was going to be one of the richest men in the world. He was going to have temples. He was going to have bands. He was going to have people serving him. He was going to have facilities, restaurants, farms, and everything. None of it was in his name. He was going to uh, administer, steward all that in the name of Krishna. But we get the prediction, and, and then we can actually spend whole seasons of our lives based on our interpretation when, in fact, Krishna is playing a little joke on us. And it's okay, because if you're in the middle of what Krishna wants to do for your life, if you're a pure devotee like Prabhupada, it's it's fine it works out just fine now another astrologer apparently then said when Prabhu was born he will be a great religious preacher and he will be known all over the world that was a second prediction and that was not untrue at all 
Um, that was right on. And in fact, Prabhupada did come to cause a spiritual worldwide revolution and spread Krishna consciousness to every uh, corner of the globe. <clears throat> So a few of our comments, Sundari Priya says, unless we are thoroughly tested, we are really not even warming up in the journey, which is so true. Vai Bobby says, astrology, palm reading can encourage one to become a devotee, but once it's a devotee, it's up to Krishna. I have to say in all fairness, our Pujari palm reader uh, was actually very good in, if people would come, they were non-devotees, they were out there, they were fruitive workers uh, for the most part. But he would tell them, if you want to get over this illness, then you should chant Hare Krishna. If you want to meet the right person, then you should chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> if you want to get more clarity and focus in your life, if you want to get a job that you love instead of a job you hate, you should chant Hare Krishna. So actually, that was, that was a good, really good aspect of it. But I was already chanting Hare Krishna, so I couldn't really see the point in myself taking advantage of his services. <laughs> Anjali says Krishna, yeah, yeah, okay, super, super. So just uh, just a, going back here to a reference, um, in the 13th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Prashant's on board with us here, coming up with the slokas, 15th verse, Krishna says, Sarvendriya ganabisham sarvendriya vibharjitam Ashakti Savrikchata Nirguram Vidabhaktacha. The super soul is the original source of all senses, yet he is without senses. He is unattached, although he is the maintainer of all living beings. He transcends the modes of nature, and at the same time, he is the master of all the modes of material nature. So Krishna not only sees everything, but he also controls everything the mode of goodness, the mode of passion, the mode of ignorance, which cause all living entities who are conditioned in this material world to act. The mo Krishna is a puppeteer and the modes of material nature are like his puppet strings. So as a puppeteer, as a controller, as the all pervasive super soul, he sees everything past, present and future. He's within the heart of all living being. He knows everything in your past. He knows what you're doing now and he knows of what you're capable of in the future. And here's a stunning fact. We all know, we all know our inner life, our secret life. We all know the, the capriciousness of the mind. I'll go even further to say the perversity of the mind. Would anyone disagree with me that the mind comes up with the most crazy, unrelated, critical, downplaying, judgmental, uh, just the mind it can just be a cesspool of unwanted thoughts and impulses and all like that. It's the nature of the material mind. Um, um, and Krishna is saying at the same time, he can clear that all up. If we begin to chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, he can not only clear up all the fogginess and all the unwanted impulses of the mind. But he's telling us right in the beginning, with all of your unworthy thoughts, with all of the degradation that flirts and orbits around you in this conditional life, Krishna still loves you. You don't have to put on a show. You don't have to pretend as we all do through Facebook and in our public persona. You don't have to be pretend to be better off than you are. Krishna hates hypocrisy. He hates pretension. He knows everything about you, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And can I tell you, he still loves you. He hasn't cut you off. You don't disgust mm. him. He loves you. He wants to do good to you. But you have to do your part and avail yourself of his help, his assistance. Last night we gave a talk. Arjuna reached a breaking point. He referenced his mind, he referenced his senses, he referenced his feelings, and he just broke down. Saw all his friends, neighbors, relatives, teachers, uh, prepared to kill him on the battlefield. And it was a breaking point for him. He tried to process it through his mind, he tried to process it through his senses, 
he tried to say, well, how do I feel about this? You know, people are always saying, you have to get in touch with your feelings, you know? So when Arjuna got in touch with his feelings, he had a total breakdown. He dropped his bow, he began to cry. But that breaking point was Krishna's, Arjuna's making point. Because when he ran, came to the end of his resources, it was at the beginning of what Krishna had to offer. So when he could go no longer further than Karpanya Dosho Pahata Shabbat Pichami, Yasisya stamps that he surrendered to Krishna. And then Krishna, who knows everything past, present, and future, he poured into Arjuna 700 verses, 18 chapters of the Bhagavad Gita, and rehabilitated Arjuna, took him from the darkness to the light, from ignorance to knowledge, from the material side to the spiritual side. Krishna loves that. Like any father, when the child gets in trouble, when the child is down on themselves, go to the father. Don't think that you're unworthy and go away from the father. Just the opposite. When you're having a crisis, you have low self-esteem, you're feeling negative, depressed, or suicidal. That's when Krishna wants you to throw yourself on his mercy. He loves nothing better than for you to go towards him in your times of doubt and your times of crisis. No father loves anything more than the child getting scared or getting bullied or getting anything negative happen to immediately run to the father and jump into his arms. There's no pleasure greater than that for the father. So Krishna loves it when you take your problems, your shortcomings, uh, you, you take that accusing voice, which is always inside of you, uh, and you put it on the altar. Krishna will take you, he'll enfold you in his loving arms, he'll protect you, he'll purify you, he'll do everything. He'll take you back to home, back to God. He's more eager that we go back than we are ourselves to go. So just take advantage of the uh, shelter and protection and ultimate liberation, purification that Krishna has always been offering us in so many, 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 many births, steadfastly, patiently, living alongside of us in the heart as the overseer, the proprietor, the permitter, and our very, very best friend. So any co last comments before we go to your wonderful kirtan here, Lakshmi? Yeah, I was just inspired by you speaking about Arjuna and, um, you know, you think about the whole Mahabharata, it was really just misunderstandings that Krishna attempted to correct. In, in the case of the Pandavas, they listened to Krishna's corrections, Arjuna and, and the rest of the Pandavas. In the case of the Kauravas, they didn't listen. And the end result was disaster, as opposed to, you know, the, the heightened glory of the Pandavas. I mean, because Arjuna, at the end of the first chapter, he was feeling what he thought was compassion, you know, morality, uh, sin versus not sin. He was feeling all those things and Krishna just kind of laughed at him. <laughs> you know, you know <laughs> what, what are you talking about compassion? You, you, the compassion is for the soul, not for the body. And you want the, the ultimate in compassion. You know, there's Shreyas and Preyas. You, you want the ultimate benefit for an individual. So that that was one thing I was, uh, you know, thinking of, and and also when Krishna corrected Bhishma and Dronacharya, you guys think you were acting according to Dharma, but you weren't. You were, it was a misunderstanding of Dharma to support someone like Duryodhana and Dhritarashtra. That you thought that was your Dharma, but that wasn't your Dharma. So the whole the whole thing that Krishna, the whole setup, is we may have our understandings or our misunderstandings. Krishna is always there to set us straight. You know, whenever we have the misunderstanding, even it may seem noble, Krishna is there to set us straight. Hadi, 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 bro. <laughs> Are you going to do Madanga or the Ektar today? Maybe I'll try Ektar. Okay, cool. I just need to tune it a little bit. So I, I said our goal, our goal in the beginning of this was to have 50 comments from you. And then when I respond, We'll have a hundred comments. So we're at, we just reached 50 comments. Thank you, Jayashree Radha. It was the 50th. I should have a prize, right? 
every day when when we reach 50 i should have some prize i can't think of anything to send you because you've got the radhika story you've got more stuff than all kinds of beautiful things but Hare krishna and the 51th comment now we're at 51 by sundari priya john malik says Hare krishna anjali i think wins the prize for the most comments govinda bhakti came up to me after last night's talk or saturday night's talk in salt lake city and he said who's that anjali i said anjali is anjali you know, one of a kind he said she takes all of your punchlines and puts them in the comments. I said, yeah, she does. <laughs> so if you, if you hear something that strikes you and you want to remember it and you want others to remember it, just repeat what I said, type it into the punchline. And then uh, everyone will have a second uh, uh, exposure to it, you know, accent it. So yeah, Anjali now says, Jai, Jai Sri Radha, you won being the 50th comment. <laughs> So we'll hear from uh, Lakshmi and then we'll run down all the list of the people that have joined us here. 22 people have liked us. We'll give your names and give some appreciation just a few minutes time. So Motivational Monday, we stayed away from all the negative topics of the Kali Yuga and we concentrated on the wonderful uh, visions that Krishna imparts to his pure devotees who themselves want to do good for people in general. Hari Nama Sri Krishna San Kirtan. Hari Bo. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Ramo Ramo Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ramo Hare Ramo 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ramo Hare Ramo 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ramo Hare Ramo 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ramo Hare Ramo 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ramo Hare Ramo 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare 
हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 हरि बोल थैंक यू लक्ष्मी हरि बोल थैंक यू सो मच वी आर सो लकी टू हैव योर वंडरफुल कीर्तन इज पार्ट ऑफ आवर प्रेजेंटेशन हियर इट्स माय गुड फॉर्च्यून Thank you Anjali. We just hit 60 comments. Anjali is actually apologizing. She calls her comments spamming and she says she I apologize for spamming. It helps me stay focused on what you say. Well, yeah, I mean that's what we want, you know. When when I first became a devotee, I never attended a proper lecture without pen and paper in my hand. I wrote down what he said. So this is the same thing. You got the comment section If something strikes you just put it in the comment section it's not spamming and you're right it does help you focus on what's being said anjani says she thinks in her case it's a d and d no we're all a d and d <laughs> that's why we're in this material world <laughs> we got a d and d. we were diagnosed with a d and d in the spiritual world and we came to this material world because we couldn't stay consistent faithful The lotus feet of Krishna. So, 
And she says, thanks for not blocking you. No, you're our star. We got 60 comments and you did 30 of them. And I don't know how it works. I don't, I don't, I'm not a social media expert or anything, but everything I've heard indicates that the more give and take, the more interactivity you have, the more you get pushed up on the Facebook algorithm. And that means the greater the chances are. We're talking about the Kali Yuga, folks. It's dark, it's dangerous, it's so bad we don't even want to talk about it on a Monday. But what we are feeling is empathy for the souls in this Kali Yuga age. We're feeling ourselves fortunate to have the buffer of Krishna consciousness so that we're not at the mercy of Kali. And we wanna extend that. We wanna make that mercy available, the mercy of the Lord available to everyone. And so the more you comment, the more we get exposed to more people, the greater the chances are that a lost soul will stumble upon our discussion and find something that will help pull them out of this vast samsara of birth, death, disease, and old age. What did the poet say? The lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives sublime and departing, leave behind us footprints in the sands of time, footprints that perhaps another sailing over life solemn man, a forlorn and shipwrecked brother, seeing shall take heart again. So every comment you make is a footprint and every footprint increases the chance that a forlorn and shipwrecked brother will see your footprint in the sands of the Facebook internet and thus take heart and begin or resume their journey back to home, back to Godhead with fresh enthusiasm and rededication. So thank you for all of those who have commented. We do, we're not sure how it works, but it will help to expand our reach. Specifically, we've got uh, 62 comments now, and I will respond to all of you, thus increasing or even doubling our total quantity of comments. But right now, those who have liked, Justin, thanks very much. I wish I could see all the comments, but unfortunately, I can only see four at a time. Lakshmi, of course. Lakshmi, did you know that you and I have 429 mutual friends? Ooh. No, I did not know that. Yeah, that mm -hmm. makes me feel like, yeah, I move in the same circles as Lakshmi. That's cool. right. <laughs> Anjali, Anjali, thank you. Anjali, I have 69 mutual friends. John Malik, he says his comment is phenomenal. We have 154 mutual friends. Kushum never misses a talk, never. She always comments three or four times with hearts and thumbs up and everything. We love you, Kushum, Hare Krishna. Sundari Priya, Hari Hari Bo, our exemplary devotee there. Subhadra, happy motivational Monday. Thank you for liking. Rakesh Ji, we had a beautiful kirtan last yesterday, Sangha, by Rakesh and his daughter Subi. Prashant, sorry there weren't as many verses today. We got carried along with the narrative presentation. Jai Si Radha, love your comments also. You and Anjali are the very much the spice in these programs. Chaitanya Mangala always shares, always shares, always puts us on various forums and groups. Thank you. Radhe Sham. Check out Radhe Sham's commentaries on Prabhupada's books in Kazakh, Kazakhstani language. Govinda Dave, it's nice to associate with you, spend some time with you on Saturday night and hear not one but two of your kirtans during the incident we're getting. You know, we have been open throughout the whole pandemic. We wear masks, we social distance. Not one person has lived in the Spanish Fort or Salt Lake Temple has gotten COVID. Now we have a cleaning lady. She comes two or three times a week. She lives outside. She got COVID. We have a handyman, Leroy. He lives outside. He comes three or four times a week. He got COVID, but not one single resident. And we have many volunteers coming and going from all over the country. They have to stay three weeks. They work six hours, six days a week, four hours a day. They're from all over the, all over the country. None of them, while they were here, got COVID. Some of them might've had COVID before they came. So thank you, Krishna. Now I've had both my shots. I've always had both their shots. There's this new vaccine, which doesn't require freezing and only requires one shot. So hopefully everybody will be free out from underneath that particular 
threat, but I'm, you know, I, I, I'm not making a value judgment on this because if you closed your temple uh, because you wanted to protect the devotees, that's very noble. That's, that's just wonderful. Um, we should be concerned with the health and well-being of the devotees because they are, they are Krishna's representatives on earth. You know, they're preachers. They're, they're the hope for the future and we need to protect them. Having said that, you know, I just have to tell you, I'm just awfully glad that we stayed open. I'm glad that we didn't put ourselves on the sidelines. I'm glad we didn't lose six months of this short, valuable human form of life by not preaching. I mean, hindsight is 2020, right? And probably I'd be singing a different song, you know, if I had gotten sick or died, or worse yet, by Bobby of COVID. And certainly that was a very real risk we took. But, you know, I'm glad. I'm glad. We took the risk. I'm glad that we've been preaching every single day, that new people have been coming. And, you know, there does seem to be a general appreciation out there. We weren't irresponsible. We didn't have bigger gatherings than what was recommended. We wore masks and social distance. We did all that. But I think the public in Utah appreciates our being there for them throughout this COVID because the the, the gatherings last Sunday, my gosh, we had 50, 60, 70 people. And after I gave the talk, I invited everyone downstairs for Kirtan, about 10 or 12 young people in their teens sat down with me upstairs and they asked the most wonderful questions. And I feel like these kinds of nectarine interchange, I feel like we're reaping the harvest from having put it on the line taken a chance and stayed open during COVID. Well, I'm not gonna say any more. Like I said, I'm not making any judgments because if you didn't stay open, I appreciate that. I respect that like anything. Um, but at the same time, I just have to say, I'm just feeling really, really good that June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, and into March, we are still preaching to the fallen conditioned souls. Thanks, Raleigh, for joining us. Bhakti Gary, Raquel, Jai Ho Budhal. Thank you, Jai Ho. Uh, by Bobby, Ram Kishore, always makes great comments. Ram Kishore, we have 286 mutual friends. Chris Castro, Rupa Manjari, and Gene Eskelson. Thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you, those of you who liked, especially thank you, those who gave us more than 60 comments, 69. Does anybody want to do the 70th comment? Yes, here we are. John Malik came in with a Hari bowl and three flowers to bring us up to 70 comments. So, thank you all very much. Thank you, Lakshmi. Rob, I hope you feel better. I hope you enjoy your farming conference a little bit later on today. We'll be back tomorrow with Transcendental Tuesday. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.